January 14, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Matthew chapter 14 from the New Testament. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard reports about Jesus. And he said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. And because of this, miraculous powers are at work in him. For Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because John had repeatedly told him it's not lawful for you to have her. Although Herod wanted to kill John, he feared the crowd because they accepted John as a prophet. But on Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod, so much that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked. Instructed by her mother, she said, Give me the head of John the Baptist here on a platter. Although it grieved the king because of his oath and the dinner guest, he commanded it to be given. So he sent and had John beheaded in the prison. His head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, and she brought it to her mother. Then John's disciples came and took the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. Now when Jesus heard this, he went away from there privately in a boat to an isolated place. But when the crowd heard about it, they followed him on foot from the towns. As he got out, he saw the large crowd, and he had compassion on them, and he healed their sick. When evening arrived, his disciples came to him, saying, This is an isolated place, and the hour is already late. Send the crowds away so that they can go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But he replied, They don't need to go. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have here only five loaves and two fish. Bring them here to me, he replied. Then he instructed the crowds to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves and two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. He gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the broken pieces left over, twelve baskets full. Not counting women and children, there were about five thousand men who ate. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side, while he dispersed the crowds. And after he sent the crowds away, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already far from land, was taking a beating from the waves because the wind was against it. As the night was ending, Jesus came to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost, and cried out with fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, Have courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, order me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind, he became afraid and started to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they went up into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. After they had crossed over, they came to the land at Gennesaret. When the people there recognized him, they sent word into all the surrounding area, and they brought all their sick to him. They begged him if they could only touch the edge of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. God, I get in this passage that we're supposed to trust you, that we're supposed to trust your plan, believe in you. And that's a powerful, powerful message. But my heart keeps tugging me back before that, when you found out that John the Baptist had been killed. 
And it says that the disciples that you know, and when you heard, you went away from there privately in a boat to an isolated place. But when the crowds heard about it, they followed you on foot from the towns. And the reason this tugs at my heart is there are, uh, there are so many times, God, when I get overwhelmed with this world. I, I don't even know how else to put it. You know, I, I thrive at a pretty high stress level, but sometimes the demand on my time and my emotions and my energy and even my money at certain points is, is too much. And, and I just want to go away. When my best friend was killed, I just wanted to go away. I just needed to figure out how to heal from that. And it wasn't I was going away from you. I just needed to go away from people. And I know we all feel that way sometimes. But the next line is the part that to me is the most powerful because it says that you saw them, you had compassion on them, and you healed them. So even while you were away from the crowd, you were grieving for John. You still had compassion for other people. And God, I guess just too often, my first reaction is impatience, uh, frustration. God, I just really hate sometimes people's intrusion on my life. And yet I'm supposed to be like you. I'm supposed to have grace in my life. I'm supposed to have compassion for people when they come to me. I'm supposed to have love for them like you have love for me. And there's a reason that they're being sent into my life, yet I'm so busy with everything else that I forget about the people. God, thank you for putting these verses in my life today, for reminding me that it is not about the to-do list, that it is about the people, and it's about relationships. And it's about letting people know about you. Everything else is not only secondary, but it shouldn't even make the list. Because you'll take care of us. You promise that. So God, thank you today for reminding me that my to-do list starts and ends with you. And second comes in your people. And if I feel I'm too weak or in a situation where I am empty and not able to help other people, then you have promised me strength. And all I have to do is turn to you and ask for strength, ask for discernment, ask for patience, which I obviously didn't get from birth. All I need to do is turn to you and ask for that. And if I'm doing your will, you will provide those things for me. That is how you were able to have compassion on this crowd that came to you, that followed you, and you were able to heal them. God, help us today to carve out time to be with you. That is our re-energizing time. That is our filling up time. And those days when I don't get very much time with you, I know it because the whole day is rush, rush, and people third, fourth, fifth on my list and to-do list first and... It even talks about how you sent the disciples on ahead of you so that you could spend time with your father. So help us to remember our priorities, God, that time with you is not just learning about you, but it's part of having a relationship with you. We can't have any relationships here on earth if we never spend time with them, if we never talk to them, if we never have adventures with them. I don't know why we think we can get away with it with you. So thank you. Thank you for the blessings of communication through prayer. Thank you for my favorite time when I just get to settle into your arms and read your word and talk to you. And I thank you for today because I know that my priorities today are going to be you first, you last, and your people everywhere in between that that's the way it has to be. Thank you for sharing this today with me, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Amen.